Twitch community. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this month's interview. And for this month's interview, I have something very, very special for you. Today with us, we have Julia Tarantino, who is just an absolutely amazing person all in all, who comes from just an amazing and wonderful family. She's one of the most dedicated pitchers, I would say, that I've ever worked with. Um, she is a 2020 graduate who has already verbal to a Division I school, which is one of the most exciting things ever. Yay! Um, she's been pitching since she's been about uh, eight or nine years old. She was, this past year, her team won nationals, and she was voted most outstanding pitcher. She um, pitched in Williamsport, and her team went all the way to regionals. Um, and all this, when she started her career, she was very young. She broke her right arm in sixth grade um, in the radial neck of her elbow. So for those of you who have, you know, been struggling coming back from injuries, I mean, look at what this amazing girl has done. Um, I think she's done the Elite Pitcher's Blueprint maybe four times. Um, she's also an, an A-game uh, student and has learned a lot through that. But she's been very wise also in terms of how she picked her travel team. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So welcome, 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 Julia. <laughs> Thank you. So we are so happy to have you here. And I think um, one of the things that I think is on everyone's mind. And one of the reasons that I really wanted to speak with you specifically today is, um, hello, you're 2020, and you've verbally committed to a really good Division I program. So tell us a little bit about how you knew that Buffalo was not only the right school for you in terms of softball, but also academically. Well, I went there for a visit, and I really liked, like, the school and, like, how it looked and, like, just, like, the look, just, like, the feel of it and how everybody that we met there, like, me and my dad would be toward the school. And, like, if we were lost, like, at any point, everybody that was there was, like, helping us, and everybody was just so nice there. And, like, it was, like, really, really, like, it was, like, a good feel. And then I went back, and I really loved the coaches, and I, I loved all the girls, too, like, usually... I don't really get, like, a, like you don't really talk to the girls as much, I feel like. And, like, I just got, like, a good, like, vibe from the girls, and I feel like they were really good, too, so. And I, I want to bring up to the audience out there that Julia had interest from a lot of other schools. This is not the first school. She didn't say, yes, you know, this is the first school that has that interest in me. Um, so Julia was very, very smart in that she visited several different campuses, spoke with several different coaches, has interacted with a bunch of different teams. Um, so by that point, Jules, I feel like you had a good idea of exactly what you liked and what you did not like. Yeah. Right? Um, but what I, what I think is also a really important point to bring up is the coaches have seen you pitch several times before you visited campus. Um, mm -hmm. And you had said that one of those outings you felt like you did not do your best tell us why that matters and how that still ended up being a positive thing for you um well I was pitching at a showcase and I was playing I was guest playing with another team on the team and I I wasn't really doing my best and it was at New England's finest I think and um I was just like kind of off and so they took me out after a couple of like innings and I, like, I don't know. I guess I just didn't get really get upset about it because, like, I understand things happen. You can't always be perfect. So I I don't really get upset about those types of things. So I just kind of, like, tried to figure out what was going on and tried to, like, fix it. And when I talked to the coach, he said that he really liked how I can like how I carried myself and that, like, I wasn't in the out sulking how I was. Like, the, I was happy and I was okay with the fact that the other girls were doing good and I was chill cheering everyone on. And so they really liked how I was doing, like, like, after I got pulled, and then I went back in after, and I pitched a lot better, and, like, he said that he really liked how I figured out what was going on, like, how I was able to self-adjust and figure out what was happening. I love that, I because th I think so many people, um, pitchers especially, tend to have a little bit of a prima donna streak <laughs> sometimes, so, you know, when they get pulled, they are kind of sulky, but 
most of the time, I think what people don't realize is when college coaches come to see you, they, they don't always come to see you pitch perfectly. They would like to see you fail a couple of times because they want to see that reaction because they don't want to feel um, like they're recruiting someone who's not a team player or who's just, in general, not the type of person that they're going to be able to get along with. Um, and mm -hmm. I think also just um, the fact that your coach is able to point that out is like a pretty amazing thing. So um, I also, I wanted to point out that basically you've been on the same travel organization for now about four years, which is wonderful. And it's a very strong travel organization. Tell us how that played a role in your recruiting and how, you know, sticking with the same team has been an advantage for you. I think that sticking with the same team is it like it's helped me a lot because it's I know I'm really comfortable with all the girls and like we all support each other so it's like we all like want to see the best things happen for each other so I think that's really helpful and it's like it's good knowing who's behind you when you're pitching and like you know who's behind you you know like what the defense is like so it's, it's helpful I think and I really and I really like my coach so I think she really helped me a lot with like, she helped me a lot. I think so, too. I think, you know, what what we want to emphasize here for a moment is that Julia has an awesome network. So she has incredibly supportive parents, really supportive siblings. Her, her travel team is very supportive of her, sends her to, like, great showcases. Um, and definitely her coach was willing to make a bunch of phone calls on her behalf throughout this whole process. So I, I think that's one of the things that people don't, who don't have that don't necessarily know what they're missing. It's so important, you know, to have such a good travel organization. I mean, how did you know? Because, I mean, I feel like I knew within probably the, like the first five or six lessons that I saw you pitch. But how did you know that Division One was going to be right for you, that that was really the level you wanted to play at? Well, I always knew that I wanted to play softball in college. But, like, I remember when we had the A-game consultation. Like, right after that, I remember being like, like wow, I can actually, like, do this. Like, it's – so, um, like, right after that, I think I actually started to, like, realize that, like, it's possible. And that's mm -hmm. wonderful because sometimes I think I remember when I was be doing the whole recruiting process and I think a lot of people had said to me like, Oh, do you think you're going to play division one? And I was kind of like, Oh, you know, like it, you know, it was sort of in the back of my mind, but it, until someone like brings it to the forefront, maybe you feel like it's fantasy or it's not like a real possibility. But then when you have something tangible that you can really s sink your teeth into. I mean, I personally think, you wouldn't feel challenged or you wouldn't feel um, like you're using everything you have at any level other than division one. Um, but also I think it's, it's, it's so suited to your personality because you love the sport and you are constantly like, we have to force you to take a rest sometimes. You're like, Julia, it's, <laughs> it's November. You know what I mean? You've been pitching for like nine months. Let's take it. Let's take a yeah. couple of weeks off, you know, because that's the type of mentality you have to have if you want to play Division One. You have to, like, want to do softball and be good at softball and excel at pitching more than you want to do anything else. Mm -hmm. But there's also the academic component, so I want to talk a little bit about that. So tell us about um, how you keep your grades up with all the traveling and all the practices and all the commitment, because you're also a very good student. Um, well, I just, like, I'm the type of person that when I get home from school, I don't, like, do anything else. I just do my homework and, like, or I do most of it in school, like, during my study hall. Like, I do, I guess I do a lot of, like, good time management because I know that on Tuesdays I have a lesson with you and I have to, like, go to my lesson. And, like, Mondays I have a hitting lesson. So, like, I know what my schedule is and I know that I have to, like, use my time wisely. So, I don't really, like, a lot of people will go home and, like, take a nap after school. Like, I just do all my homework and study for my tests and stuff like that that's beautiful and I think that's going to serve you so well in college because what um I think a lot of people tend to be scared of the time commitment with division one but if you're good with time management exactly what you're describing right here um 
that's not going to be a problem. I mean, you're going to have study halls. You're going to have things like that that are just going to help to guide you. And Division One has a lot of academic support for their athletes because they don't want to see anyone yeah. dip below, you know, the, um, the what's the word I'm looking for, the minimum GPA required, which is nothing I would ever worry about for you, I have to say. <laughs> um, so anything else in terms of, like, what helped the whole recruiting process for you or something that you feel like really helped you to make this good decision for yourself? Um, I just think that communication, I think, with the coach probably helped me a lot. Because I would call him, like, every two weeks. And I still do call him, like, every two, every two weeks. And, like, just to keep talking to him, like, trying to figure out what's going on and, like, get everything straightened down. And just, I think that helped me a lot. Oh, I love it. That's a wonderful answer. And if, I'm just going to expound on that a tiny bit, is that sometimes when people verbal, they do not maintain good contact. And that, I think, is a huge mistake because, you know, then sometimes expectations don't line up properly. What Julia is doing in terms of constantly keeping in contact with her college coach, you know, he is, has certain expectations for her spin and her ability to hit spots and things like that. And she knows exactly what those are right now. <laughs> so by the time she gets to college she's just so dedicated those things are going to be perfect so <laughs> so Jules anything else that you would like to add regarding the recruiting process or any good advice that you have for people out there who are who are kind of just starting or maybe are a little late to the process at this point because unfortunately that does happen um I would say just, like, to just keep saying communication, always know what's going on, and, like, just keep, like, watching, like, the, the team and always knowing what's going on with, like, the team that you're interested in, and things that. Oh, I love that. See, now, this is also very wise, because then in your communications with these different teams, you can say, well, I followed your most recent, you know, outing against, let's say, University of South Florida, or whatever the case may be, and, um, you know, it looks like you, you guys had a great outing and things like that. You know, when they see that you're customizing to them, that indicates that they're truly interested. And it's not just, you know, a form letter. Coaches, let's just place a big emphasis on this hate, 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 hate form letters. Um, and I also think um, something that I'd like to emphasize there is Julia stayed in contact with all of the schools that were recruiting her, not, ju not just the one that she liked the most. And that's so super important because, you know, sometimes things come up, <laughs> you know, but this, this allowed her to make great decisions, to know where the other schools stood at what time. And um, I'm just so happy for you because I'm just like so thrilled. So. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. And, um, yeah. Any questions, guys, of course, you can message me. And Jules, you could stay on for just a second after, but we're going to finish up. Thank you so much for your time. This is someone, guys, that you're going to be wanting to watch, you know, as, as she goes off to college because she is that level of pitcher. She is that amazing. So thank you again so much, Julia Tarantino, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>